Well, there is Canyon Lake. We're getting ready to put about a third of the crawfish in Canyon Lake. We got a couple out there fishing right now. Ross Cagles, these brothers out there fishing. He got here a couple hours ago. He'll be doing a crawfish boil Saturday night, him and Tim. They are 14 carat coon asses. <laughs> Not Cajuns, coon asses. They real. They real. They sure are. And uh, looks like it looks like it. Steve beat us down here. He called me from about five miles away. I had to run in and get things ready. But uh, we're going to start getting crawfish out. We're going to start getting crawfish out. Turn them loose. We'll show you what we do. You don't just dump them in the lake. It's not something that you do. You uh, you actually, oh, looky here what they've done. They got them laid out. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Looky here. See, they've already laid the bags out. Those are roughly about 30 or 35 pounds of crawfish in a in a sack right there. They've laid out three or four sacks out here. We can start we can start working on them. We're gonna turn loose turn loose quite a few right in through here and. Uh, we got about four bags right here. We're going to go all the way down there. We're going to turn them loose where we got a lot of vegetation around the bank. What do you say, Mr. Steve? How are y'all? Doing good, buddy. How are you doing? Doing good. Are you ready to look, do this? Look, oh, we're ready. We're ready. Looks like you dropped a few bags off already. We've already got six bags out here, and I figured we'll put four or five more back this way. Yeah, yeah. That'd be, that sounds good. That'd be good. Yeah, we'll start working on these right here and, and uh, start start getting them down there and see if we can get them babies to crawl into the water. Well, these are probably the liveliest we are. Are they? Oh, yeah. These, I mean, this, this guy, Max, went and cut these, got these out of the water while we were. Really? He went right out and caught them? Yeah. That's good. That's the way to do it. That's a big bunch. Actually, we had to wait on them for about We had to wait on Really? Them. Really? Yeah. We don't... This is Terry Morris. Terry hey, Terry. Morris. Good to see you, Jimmy Houston. Yes, yes sir. This is, this is an annual deal here. Now, once we get these crawfish to put in the lake, we don't worry about grading them or anything like that. So we have... We don't... They're not... These are not all great big giant eating crawfish. See that crawfish there is not an eating crawfish. But the one thing about it, you get a lot more crawfish in 35 pounds, you know, and that's about what those bags are, 30, 35 pounds. And uh, what we do here is we're gonna, we're gonna dump these out, we're gonna string them along the bank here, and uh, right in close to the water, and, and let them crawl into the water. You don't really wanna dump them into the water. You, these, these crawfish, they know where the water is, and they'll be, they'll be getting down there and, and crawling in. You see how quickly they go in. Now, some of them get confused and go opposite directions. That really helps, happens. And you kind of have to help them. Here's one that's all the way up here. Now he's turning around and going back the right direction. So you kind of got to help them a little bit sometime. Get them all heading down in the right direction. But uh, we're going we're gonna to start dumping. We're going to start dumping right on the edge of the water. They look really good. These are really great crawfish. And again, like I said, you know, these are, these are just... just a, they grade these by in the boat. When they dump them in they're off their, out of their traps, they go through and they slide down and they grade them. And, uh, and a lot of them they just simply throw back because they're just not quite big enough. But in doing what we're doing here, and look at see this guy here, he gets up in this defensive position. That's what that's their defensive position right there. He thinks he can whip that iPhone. <laughs> and he can't. But he thinks he can. But these guys, these guys are are getting after it. And uh, we'll come along here and kind of check, and but the majority of them are going to go go to the water. Majority of them are going to go to the water. Let's uh, let's go off down here and find. We got a bag right down here. Let's go down here and we'll dump this bag. Now, one of the things that'll happen. One of the things, one of the things that'll happen is putting all these crawfish in here around the boat ramp, is that the bass will just load up right here. And the other thing that'll happen is lightning over there. My grandson. He's over there helping Steve dump that bag, but lightning will load up on this boat ramp also. <laughs> so the fish, the crawfish will go in here. They put out a real big odor, crawfish scent. 
the bass will come around over here close to the, and my, my grandson will load up on that boat ramp here for about the next two days. And what he'll be doing, what he'll be doing is catching bass after bass after bass. That'll come in here, that'll come in here to, uh, now a lot of these will get eaten. A lot of them will get eaten in, you know, pretty quickly, actually, unfortunately. That's exactly what will happen. That's not, we want, we want as many as, as can to, to be in here for a while. You see what happens there when you start pouring them in? Look at them start coming out of there. They're going in all directions. These are really lively crawfish. These are great. We've been putting in about twice as many every year. And we decided that and they get down here in the bottom, we decided we might be losing a lot, some, a lot more crawfish just by hauling so many and the weight, the weight down on the bottom. But you can see as they come out of there, how, how lively they are and how they're taking off, taking off toward the water. But now, what'll happen, this is Memorial Day weekend, and so it's the end of May, basically, real close to the end of May. These crawfish will actually start burying up in, in July, and once they start burying up, once they start burying up, they're gonna start spawning a mama crawfish a mama crawfish can actually can actually have about 400 babies. So all you figure probably half of these guys are girls, <laughs> and uh, and the mama will have about 400 babies, and that's how you get your crawfish going in the lake. And and we do it every year. We do it every year. It's, it's kind of like anything else you know the more you do it the better off you're going to be and so we put them in every year and we don't run out of crawfish we didn't know about this year with all that virus and stuff but crawfish didn't care did they about the virus oh no we ain't got no virus in louisiana <laughs> no y'all didn't have any virus problems in louisiana I like to get them close. I want them going this way here. I want them going toward the, toward the, uh, toward the water. That's the deal right there. That's a, that's a pretty, pretty good size Louisiana crawfish right there. And, uh, Look at those pinchers up there. Grab my knife. I'll give him grab that knife. Give him grab that knife. You gonna give him a kiss? Mm. <laughs> 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 One tried to bite you. They don't bite. Crawfish don't bite. They pinch. But they will pinch you. Wow, look at that. That's a lobster there. <laughs> that, Woo! That is a lobster there. That's a good one there. Look at that. That's pretty good for an 11-year-old girl to pick up a crawfish like that. You'd think she's from Louisiana, wouldn't you? <laughs> look at that. Look at that pincher. Look at that. Come down to Louisiana. She wants to be. Look at there. He grabs a hold of your hand. He can't quite reach you though. You did good. Look how big it is. Probably a big old female right there because they don't have any eggs yet. That, that's probably a big old female crawfish. That's the kind we'll be eating right there. Throw him out there in the water. Yeah. Crawfish can live. Crawfish can live. These it's these it's out here. Uh, crawfish can live in or out of the water, either one. Uh, they're one of the few species that live just fine in the air, and they live just fine in the water. And what we do is once we put them in is we kind of mess around a little bit and find some of them that some of them they just don't get oriented to that water quite as quickly as you think but you watch a lot of them and they'll they'll take off and and be heading up the bank and then pretty soon you see them going back the other way toward the water 
but but I can tell you crawfish has got a big scent that's why the bass get after the crawfish so much is because of scent the fish are smelling these things right now but also in addition in addition to the fish smelling them coons possums all that kind of stuff will be smelling them also They take their tails and just dig down in the mud. This guy right here, he's, he is in a defense mode. If you turn over, I will throw you in the lake. He said, I'm not turning over. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. He didn't get me. Look at that. The big boy right there. <laughs> Out there in the water. All right, all right, we only have about four more bags to put in Canyon Lake here, and then we got about 15 or 20 bags to put in over at the Eagle. And we're going to go over here and put them in another area, but we're putting all of these in where they got a lot of vegetation, a lot of places to hide, a lot of places to get away from the bass because a lot of these are going to get eaten. There's absolutely no doubt about it. You know, it's expensive bass food when you're doing that, but to make lakes really, really good, you need to stock a variety of forage fish and, and bait for them. You need crawfish, you need shad. I think if you can get threadfin shad, that's great. Gizzard shad, if you can get them both, that's even better. That's really the, the greatest thing to do is put both threadfin shad and gizzard shad in the lake. And uh, bluegill, a variety of bluegill, copper nose bluegill are awfully great. But a variety of bluegill works, works, uh, works in, you know, just perfectly for a lake. Tilapia, if you can get a hold of some tilapia. Tilapia are getting really, really expensive, but if you can put in just a couple, two or three hundred pounds of tilapia early in the year like this in April or May, where your water temperature is not going to get down cold, uh, that really helps too. That makes a tremendous difference, being able to do that. So, I'm going to get down here and get kind of kind of close to the water. Oh, get close to the edge. <laughs> get close to the edge, that's what we're going to do. Get kind of close to the edge. Well, I want a place where I can get down there and walk too. I don't know. <laughs> hang on, Sherry. Hang on. All right. All we do on these things, you know, they're tied, obviously, but we don't worry about that. We just take our knife, and they've got these bags packed completely full. Of course, the more they get in there, the higher price it is. You know, they weigh them. Completely full. That cross. Ow! I got in there and one got me. I mean, got me. Man, blood. Look at them go. Look at them come out of there. Look at them come out of there. Now another thing that we've got a lot of on this ranch is big rattlesnakes, big diamondback rattlesnakes, big uh, timber rattlers. And we're walking around out here in shorts. Uh, Sherry's got her boots on. They bite her, if they bite her low enough. But you're not too, not too apt really and truly to, uh, to run into a rattlesnake up here in this. Let's put five, six, let's put four more sacks in. Let's put four in the mule, I mean, in the tracker off-road, and we'll drive over to that side. That's what's in them sacks. Huh? In the oh, we got them already? All right, we'll go do that. And uh, we'll meet y'all at the, we'll meet y'all at the ranch. I bet they're the best ones of all, aren't they? 
Well, one's good looking there. Not many dead ones that much. The, the, the great thing about these is, is we got, they're, they're, they're really smaller crawfish, so we got way more crawfish for the dollar and uh, and they're and they're they're fine. I mean all of these fish right here are gonna bury up in July and the mamas will bury up and have a lot of babies. We'll have crawfish bounds all around the yard right here. I didn't push the button. Look how their red eyes shine. You see their red eyes shining in that light? I can see them a lot of times down here I'm down here walking around on the pier and look down and you can see their red eyes shining a foot deep. You put that light on them. Look at, them look at that giant! Look at that giant there. I mean, that's a that's probably a big old giant female. Look at her eyes shine red. And that's something. Look at that. That is stocking crawfish right there. Now I'm telling you. All heading out there. Those are going right in. Next spot. Next spot coming right up. Pull on down the bank a little ways here. And do that little game again. This is such a great place to put them because they got they got all kinds of knife lost its sharp, hadn't it? It's cutting them pretty good when I started. 20 bags later, it's not cutting them so good. I believe that'll play. I guarantee you. That big, big boy right there. Actually, uh, cleaned some fish on already three or four times. Bass or uh, Both. We, we kept a few bass, you know. Cleaned one day, nine one day, and 18 one day. Get back, Beamer. Bella. I hope you enjoyed that video. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that little bell so it'll ding and remind you, and you'll never miss a Jimmy Houston Outdoors video. Thanks a bunch, guys and gals.